see, I'm a wolf in shepherd's clothing. And I'm a wolf that likes meatballs and spaghetti. Now, there's a story behind that, but the only way you're going to hear it is if you can say my name. Gubio. Gubio. I don't think some people want to hear the story. I don't think some people want to hear the story. Gubio. Oh, that's better. That's better, much, much, much better. Now, I'll tell you the story. Well, there was a man that lived 800 years ago, and so did I. And I lived outside the town of Gubbio, so I took its name. But my story was very sad until I met him. First of all, I got mange. <laughs> And that's for a wolf or a dog is very, very unhappy. Your fur falls out. You look very disreputable. And so my wolf pack sent me packing. I couldn't stay with them anymore. It was very sad. I was very sad. But in my sadness, I got very angry very, very angry. And what I would do was I would howl at night, especially at the villagers as they walked by. And I have to admit, I ate sheep. <laughs> and the villagers did not like it. Not one, not one little bit, not even a little. Anyway, they just wanted me gone, but I didn't want to go. So eventually what happened was Francis came to town and they were complaining and they knew Francis liked animals but they knew he wouldn't like me. So anyway, they sent him into the woods and he was walking around and I saw him and like I did with all the villagers, I howled at him and growled and, and everything. But I never would hurt anybody but the sheep, of course. So anyhow, finally, he just very calmly stands there, and I could see that he wasn't going to move, and just stood there. So I kind of walked up to him, and he didn't run away. And he started to pet me. And I was so amazed, because that's one of the things I missed most. The, touch of other wolves and, and just being around and you know when we sleep we'd be in this big pile, a wolf pile, and it was really fun and I enjoyed it until I got the mage. Until I looked like I did. And so then they didn't want anything to do with me. But Francis did. So Francis got to the village and I walked by his sign. And I sat down, and Francis started talking to the villagers. And he said, you got this all wrong. He's not angry at you. He's just angry at life. <laughs> and so they looked and could kind of relate, because, you know, some people can kind of relate. So anyway, what happened was, after Francis did this big explanation, he said, I have spoken to the wolf, which he had, but I'm going to tell it to you like he's just telling it to the villagers for the first time. So you're going to be the villagers who hear it for the first time. I already knew what she's going to say. And he said, what we need is a compromise. And he said, what I want you villagers to do is to feed him. And what I also want you to do is to give him a shepherd's cloak. So they did that. And with the shepherd's cloak, now I look sort of okay. As you can see, it's a little strange for a wolf, but it's not that strange. It's, it's, it's really okay. I, I walk around, I'm warm, you know, and the rest of me is covered up, which is good. And then 
they fed me, guess what? Does anybody remember what I like? Spaghetti and meatballs. They fed that to me all the time, so it became my favorite meal. And just to make it special, it was lamb balls. <laughs> so they were really very conscientious and very, very nice to me. And I was very nice to them. And we would walk in and out, and I'd be there, and they'd play. But one more thing that Francis did for me. They would go to church on Sunday, but they wouldn't let me in the church. And Francis saw that, and he was hurt. And I kind of, at this point, was beyond getting angry at the little things anymore. But he came out of the church, and he invited me in. And because he invited me in, guess what? Do you think anybody said anything? You think they said, no, put him out. No, none of them said that. So I was allowed in church every Sunday after that. And so it was like I had a new wolf pack. And sometimes that happens. You move or something happens and you get a brand new wolf pack. You weren't even expecting it. I wasn't expecting it. Did I think I was going to be wearing a shepherd's cloak instead of nice wolf fur? No, I never thought that was going to happen. But it did. So out of all of that stuff that happened to me at the beginning, it was kind of like a blessing in the end. Because now the villagers were my friends and they had children just like you and they would play with me, would fetch and what all else, and they'd pet me and everything, and it was really great. So what started out as kind of a really big problem ended up a really big blessing. And that's what Francis was all about. He saw people, animals and things, and anybody that was disturbed, he sensed it. He felt it deep inside, and he wanted to see if he could just help people see how good they were, and how important they were, and how essential they were. And if we were able to get over what we look like, and what we see, and what we, we do all those kinds of things and judgments about this and that and everything else, then, you know, it's it's just a better, better, big, different, diversified wolf pack. Wolf pack. So anyway, Linda, who's the artist, captured all of those moments. And that's my cousin, the fox, actually. That, that's, that's not a wolf, but anyway, it can't be perfect. So, I just wanted to tell you the story, and I'm so glad. And what, before I leave, I just want to hear, what's my name? Gubio. Everybody? Gubio. Very good. Oh. Thank you very much. Well, Brother Wolf, thank you so much for visiting us. Oh, thank my you pleasure. so much for coming. My pleasure. So we have to... We have to thank Brother. Ah, thank you, thank you. Yes, the wolf in shepherd's clothing. The wolf in it. shepherd's clothing. Yes, yes, indeed. Because it wasn't much to, uh, I didn't need much convincing. Yeah. <laughs>